When my uncle died, all he'd owned was furniture too filthy to be donated and a collection of VHS tapes. His trailer was a rental that he'd fallen behind in payments. Ten unmarked tapes were put in a box labeled for Mark. His VHS still worked. Found an old TV fatter than it was tall at Goodwill and managed to hook it up. Knowing Uncle Rupert, I had the police's number ready to dial in case it was cheese pizza. However, it was also possible these were home videos. Completely innocent and full of good memories my mom would be loath to miss. I had my fingers crossed that it was the latter, so she had something good to remember him by. After six hours of viewing, I had good news and bad news. All ten were indeed home videos, each clandestine recordings of different family reunions, but the camera was pointed to the sky and captured no footage of human faces. Snippets of conversation drifted in and out of perception. The occasional frisbee soared overhead during the daylight recordings. Some kid bumped the tripod on the 2004 4th of July recording and got yelled at by Rupert. The scolding wasn't particularly intense and the kid laughed it off, but Rupert grumbled long after she ran away. I told my mom this the next morning, while she was staring into her coffee mug. Nothing inappropriate? No. Can I have them? Sure. And can you set up the VCR in the living room? I shook my head. That's why I had to buy the analog one. So she brought the mug to her lips without drinking, still looking at the same spot. If you're not going to use it, then we could make room for it out here. It'll have to sit on the ground. That's fine. I had coffee and a hard-boiled egg before setting it up, trying to direct the conversation to something else. How she was feeling, whether she wanted to attend the funeral, if she'd talked to her other siblings, etc. She gave one-word answers and let her drink get cold. My mom settled onto the couch as I finished it up, still blank and sallow with the mug in her hands, acting more as a sensory comfort than a drink. I hoped watching them would help her process things. The tape I put in had recorded a nighttime event, probably a summer reunion given the lack of fireworks and abundance of greenery. Trees stretched into view, creating a frame of leaves around the starry sky. I asked if she needed anything else. She shook her head, and I left for work. When I got home, she was sitting in the same spot. I'll clarify that I don't live with my mother. She lives with me. My dad divorced her following an intense bout of depression where she refused to speak with him, unless she was threatening to commit suicide and wouldn't see a therapist. As their only child and someone with enough income to support her, I told him to free himself and I'd take care of her. She's made significant improvements in her mental health, but it's not unusual for something to set her off. No doubt her brother's death had hit harder than she was expecting. However, she turned to look at me eyes red from crying, and said, You're just like him. I misunderstood the comment and smiled, preparing to say something about he's my uncle and he'll always be a part of me. Then she clarified, Always scheming against me. What are you talking about? She'd accused me of hating her before, so I shifted scripts internally. Something, something, I do this because I love you. I'm grateful you gave birth to me. My life is so much better with you living here. She pointed at the screen, paused on a frame that looked identical to the one I'd left for work on. This is depraved, Mark. I can't believe you'd do this to your own mother. What happened? I promise I wouldn't give you any of these if I saw something gross. Did someone say something? I sat down, made eye contact. She immediately shifted her weight and her gaze in the opposite direction. Screw you. Mom, seriously. I might have let something slip, but it wasn't on purpose. I'm sorry it upset you. She folded her arms. I'll go through them all again and pay better attention this time. Pay some attention right now, she snapped, her hands flashing from her sides to my shoulders and turning me to the screen. How do you miss that? M miss what? Are you messing with me? Jerk! She stormed to her room and slammed the door, leaving me baffled. Stars and leaves against the blue night sky. I rewound it by a full minute and listened carefully. No one was talking. 
I checked the freezer where I kept microwave meals for when she didn't have the energy to cook, and found she hadn't made any since I was gone. I popped in a single serving lasagna and brought it to her when it was done as a peace offering, knocking on her door. I'm sorry about the videos. I made you dinner. Aunt Shelley wanted me to ask you if you could text her back about the funeral, by the way. I'm not going, and I don't want it. I'm leaving it at your door. I put a trashy reality show on the bigger TV and texted Shelly that mom didn't have the emotional energy to go, but would be sending her thoughts and prayers. Shelly texted back a few minutes later with screenshots of their conversation. Derek wants to know if you're coming. It'd mean a lot to everyone and it's more to support us than him. We love you so much and we want to see you again, okay? Rupert hates me. It's not for him. I'm not going to pretend I don't hate him either. Can I come down and visit you soon then? Yes. Come talk some sense into Mark. Unless you hate me too. Oh no. What did Mark do? He gave me his uncle's porn collection and said they were home movies. We all know what Rupert was up to. If you can't talk sense into him, I'll report him to the feds, I swear to God. Underneath those screenshots was this. Why would you do that to your mother? I took a picture of the smaller TV with the video playing and sent it. This is what she's talking about. Please come down and let her know she's seeing things. I'll arrange a psychiatry appointment. Does it cut to something obscene? Nope, it's just the sky for the whole video. You sent a picture of Rupert's face. No, I didn't. It's the sky. Are you looking at the image I sent you? She sent the same one back to me. This is your uncle Rupert, not the sky. This is not funny, Mark. I'm not trying to be funny. Bring Uncle Derek and we'll figure this out. Fine. But you're in a lot of trouble if you're trying to pull a prank. See you tomorrow, Shelly. My mom wouldn't speak to me for the rest of the day. I texted her letting her know who was coming, but she didn't respond. Shelly and Derek looked the way they had my entire childhood, tired and getting sick of their own fake smiles. When I led them to the living room, those smiles disappeared. Messed up, Derek said. Shelly shook her head. Mom's room is the first on the left. Could you... Could, could one of you go get her? She won't talk to me right now. Okay. Shelly left while Derek sat down on the couch with a sigh. The couch's wooden skeleton groaning with the strain. It's a night sky, right? You see the night sky. He turned to me with startling speed, eyes enormous. Shelly said it was a face, right? Right, but it's... It's not either of those. He paused, looking back at it. Not to me, anyways. A banshee shrieked pierced our ears, prompting Derek to cup his hands over them and forcing me to see what was wrong. Shelly leaned against the doorway, mouth agape, and my mother was draped across her bed, naked, ringed with long, thin streaks of red, thanks to the razor blade in her hand. She was alive, her chest rising and falling with a gentle wheeze. The wounds more for show than results, but it was a relapse to a state she hadn't delved into since before the divorce, and the mere sight of her frail body in such a painful and vulnerable position put ice in my veins. Alice, Shelley gasped, her eyes watering. Alice, oh my god. Screw you, she whispered. Shaking, my aunt took out her cell phone and called 911. I went to tell Derek and he was watching the tape, face red and hands balled into fists. Shelly followed me out as she was holding her conversation, stopping to ask me medical information about my mom and what our address was. But her eyes ended up glued to the screen. It was just the sky just the damn sky. When the call ended, and we had a 10 minute wait time for an ambulance, Shelly took the remote and shut the TV off. Mark, you see the sky? Yes? But it's his face. It's a hooker, Derek snapped. A dead one. We have to give this crap to the cops. Terror and frustration balled into a wire nest inside of my stomach. Unable to see how or why this was happening, no one could agree on what it was or the severity of it. Fine, we'll have the police review it, 
and they'll tell us what's on it. When we get their answer, we take it as the truth, okay? Okay, Shelly said. He was a bad dude, Derek grumbled. It's a wonder he didn't die in prison. We looked away from it to see my mom standing at the mouth of the hall, smiling faintly, still naked and trailing red droplets behind her. Now you see it, she said, an unnatural tremor in her voice. Now you see it. My mother was put into a psychiatric hospital and diagnosed schizophrenic. Shelley and Derek skipped the funeral, as did I. Although I gave the tapes to the police the next day, I started having dreams about the footage. Just the night sky and leaves surrounding it, breathing gently like an acid drip. Every morning I'd wake up feeling like I'd only blinked. Background noises began to morph into compressed audio of voices I didn't focus on. Didn't let reality slip out of my grip. Got a letter in the mail from Derek a week after the incident, where he confessed to helping Rupert hide a body when he was 20, and Rupert was 23. He said Rupert claimed to be defending himself and wasn't ready to admit to what his brother was capable of, so he pretended to believe him. Shelley called some time after that to tell me no one had seen Derek in a few days and to let someone know if I found him. For her sake, I burnt the letter. The dying embers resembled the center of the frame my mom paused on. A stern-faced officer eventually returned all ten tapes to me and said they were blank. <laughs>